Hey guys, welcome back to my solo run of Baldur's Gate, Siege of Dragonspear. We're continuing on after the prologue now, and this is the first main area that we need to go to. Um, there is a small event if you just immediately travel over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this first. Um, worth noting that the wand paralyzation is still going to be relatively useful for humanoid enemies, but I don't use it that much. Isabella Crusaders. Do we look like we've not my name enough talk? You get a pretty decent item if you kill these two um, NPCs here. Um, of course I fail the first uh, wand usage here, but I managed to get it on the second attempt. So you do eventually get a ion stone that you can wear in your head slot, and this one is kinda nice because you get um, regenerating health with it. Also, I didn't want to attack this mage here, so I just used acid arrows because he has fire shields, so I don't want to go into melee and take damage from that. It's done. I have many fine wares! Here I decided to get a couple Greater Restoration Scrolls because you're going to be fighting a few undead that can level drain you, so it is nice to have. I think I do avoid it anyway, so I don't end up using them, but you may as well take them while, while you're here. I think one of the side quests here to do with the stones, I can't actually do it unless you have 16 or more charisma, I believe. Um, this character has 15, so I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to hit the level cap, like, pretty much next video anyway. Um, really, it's it, it doesn't take long to hit the level cap, just because you get so much experience from everything. We're close. I picked up the two items here, so I could just immediately turn this in, and the other one was from the Vampire Hunter. Uh, what you get from this quest is one of the... Um, returning darts, uh, plus two darts. Um, it also does acid damage, so it is actually a really good item for killing trolls. I think this is one of the items that you can import into Baldur's Gate 2 as well. Uh, just using a Siege of Dragon Spear save. So they're actually pretty decent to start off with, but I think um, in Baldur's Gate 2 uh, they drop in certain areas, so there might be items that you're going to get too late anyway that for them to matter. Uh, I decided to do this side quest here just because it's quick and pretty easy, but I do line of sight the uh, mage here. I think I end up using the one of the arrows of the spell that I still have. Yeah, I do. Just because like, it's so much easier. I believe that might have been a protection from magic scroll, although maybe it is cursed, but I never actually identified it. Um, I put on the ring of free action here, but just because you can get webbed very easily by these spiders. Yeah, I also summon for them because it tends to help out. Yeah, the spiders here, there's a few packs of them and they're annoying enough to uh, actually want to put that on. My save versus spells is not at guaranteed rate, so it is just safer to use that. All my stuff is authentic. Really, it is. I 
So the main area in this chapter is this one right here, the dig site. I think this is uh, completely optional, but you may as well do it. But there's going to be a lot of undead in here, and a lot of enemy groups like this. This first area isn't too bad, um, although there is a group up the top where you need to save an NPC. And he can die quite easily, so I end up using the summoning wand. Dumathon's secret gleam. What's left of it? No, I shouldn't have complained. We'd none of us have survived that onslaught without your aid. I think it's the wraith down here that can potentially lev level drain you on hit, so ideally avoid that if you can. Uh, the one problem about using restoration scrolls is you'll almost certainly be fatigued after it, so you might need to rest. Returned. What did you find? Any sign of Gerlin Coldheart? Here's when I go back to using the Wands of Fire, of course. And like before in Baldur's Gate 1, the Scorcher is generally the better use of the Fire Wand because it does hit twice. But if you need to do AoE damage and you can't really maneuver about with the, um, Using the Scorcher part of the wand, then you may as well just use the uh, the AOE Fireball. There's some Umber Hulks here that could quite easily confuse you, so you want to try and avoid that if possible. Um, I think it, you could potentially just use a Potion of Clarity here and then not have to worry about that at all. I actually take a decent amount of unnecessary damage here, probably, just because I'm like. I could have backed up and just easily just killed them from range. I don't know why I didn't really. I got to the stage where that one arrow of detonation was annoying me in my inventory, so I ended up just using a couple here. Really didn't need to, but as you can see, it pretty much does instant damage as long as it lands, and the fireball always hits. So yeah, that's fun. They'll still get their save for half damage, but the fact that you're firing multiple fireball AoEs per round with a longbow is just pretty ridiculous in general. So we go further in here a bit, and this is when we're going to fight a lot of undead, like a huge amount of them. Just big groups of undead all over this place, and there's also the shadowed souls, which I find incredibly annoying from the prologue again. Um, one thing that I didn't do is, I probably should have used the protection from fire scroll, um, but I end up just using a potion, so I get like 90% fire resistance. Because I decide to go and open the room to the left here first, because I need to to go back to it later. But I end up just using 90% fire resistance. I probably could have uh, avoided some damage if I actually became immune to fire or cast protection from fire, which I haven't memorized. There's an enemy in this pathway that's really annoying, this Bronze Sentry, which I think is one of the enemies that appears in Baldur's Gate 2, but you're much lower level here. Um, the best way I've found of dealing with them is not to get in a melee with them, because they have really good Thacko. Um, so I end up just chugging an oil of speed and then just using acid damage, so acid arrows. Uh, he seems to take full damage from that when pretty much anything else apart from crushing, he'll resist the other types of damage, so 
it does take a while because he does have quite a lot of hit points, but I don't want to get in a melee with this guy. There's enemies here up this corridor that will magic missile the first enemy that they see, so obviously a good time to use the summoning wand. I probably could use the summoning wand a lot because that was one of the ones that I did sell and rebuy in Baldur's Gate 1. So it has an absurd amount of charges as you can see. Um, we need to do a quick puzzle here. I think that you need to find this code from some of the other rooms, but since I know it already, I'm just going to do it immediately. Well, this room here it has a bunch of enemies in it, so there's two groups here, one at the front of the room and one at the back. Um, the enemies at the front seem to be mostly like zombies, so they aren't too big a deal, but... There's some more Shadowed Souls at the back, or just one, I think, thankfully, but yeah, there's a bunch of enemies in here in general, and those are greater gas as well, so I imagine that they probably could have, um, probably could have held me and then I would pretty much be dead as well. You'll see what I mean by uh, very <laughs> often using the uh, the fireballs that we can because just the AOE damage is so much better than anything I could do. Um, potentially, if I wasn't an illusionist, I could maybe wear robes and use skull trap as well. Um, kind of like place a bunch of skull traps, then aggro all the enemies, and then it would make it a lot easier, perhaps. But obviously, since I'm an illusionist. That's the one necromancy spell that I can't really use uh, that's useful at lower levels. So I end up just using the uh, Scorcher charge on the um, on the Shadowed Soul just to try and kill it pretty much instantly, which is nice. So I don't heal here, and I probably should have. Um, but I was relatively confident that after this room there really isn't too much that's that big a concern here. This is actually when I go back here and uh, open the door down here, so I did leave it till now. Um, so like I mentioned, the fire resist ring only gives 40%. I think you could perhaps chug two resistance potions and they might stack, because the magic resistance potions did stack in Baldur's Gate 1. Um, I used that in the last fight, so I'd imagine the fire resist potions are probably the same. I just don't have any other rings that are really worth anything right now. There is the... Um, Ever memory, which gives you double the amount of level 1 spells for mages, but since I'm pretty much going this entire, uh, see, the entire playthrough of Siege of Dragonspear using a uh, full plate, I can't really see myself swapping and using robes. So I clear out the rest of this area. There is one side room that's unnecessary, more or less. And it does have another shadowed soul in it, but you need it to get the last scepter for the pool over there. That gives you a little extra experience. I don't like this room though, because uh, you're going to see that I summon uh, 
first before opening the door and then just immediately everything <laughs> starts uh, getting thrown. Uh, I decide to use Arrows of Detonation. I use three of them I believe. But even then, some of these are still living, so I, I drag everything back to the entrance pretty much and kill them off one by one. This was really not the time I was hoping to see this enemy, and of course they hit me for like a bunch of damage, but thankfully seems like uh, it worked out anyway because I just immediately killed it with that fire wand, and I summon one more time and then finish off the rest of these enemies. So yeah, some of these rooms can be really, really annoying uh, solo, because obviously you just get attacked by a bunch of enemies at once. Um, most of the enemies do seem to be melee though, at least. So, if you can just range k kill them like I did, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Sorry about the massive amount of uh, clicking that I'm going to be doing um, in terms of like skipping the dialogue and stuff. By the way, um, like before, it wasn't really too much. Uh, interested in role playing or anything like that in these playthroughs it's just mostly gameplay focused You're going to see me use the same tactic here. Um, I think I actually fall pretty low on hit points here. I don't know why I didn't heal before this this room here, but uh, I definitely should have because <laughs> I could very easily just die to a few crits. Um, they just happen. And of course this is the enemy that I was, uh, I was looking for. He did save his first time there, so I don't think the wand actually kills him. Oh, it, it does. He fails his second save there. Uh, I think I end up just like uh, ranging these enemies to death because I was a bit scared. But honestly, I probably could have just drank a few potions that I had. I really should um, get rid of the small potions because they're pretty much useless at this point and start collecting the extra healing potions because you get a decent amount. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have went into melee with that guy. And I end up having to heal anyway. So you can either decide to try and fight the witch normally, which I wouldn't suggest, um, or you can go back to the dwarf at the start of the dig site and ask for help, where he gives you a sort of a, a considerable that you can use that completely dispels all his protections. And I believe cast insect plague on him as well, so he's pretty much a free kill. There's also an optional encounter you can do with the spectacles I got in the prologue later on to kill another witch, and you can use the same item on him, and it, it does work on both of them, which is nice. So I definitely want to pick this up, if nothing else, it does have three charges. Um, after you kill the witch, you need to actually destroy uh, the box that he has. Um, there's a hidden wall behind him. And then you need to run to that um, fire area that we were at before. We didn't actually go in the room. Um, you destroy the box there to kill him permanently. 
So you're going to see that it becomes really easy. Like all you need to do is wait for him to cast his protections and then use that uh, thing the dwarf gave you. And then he's pretty much a free kill. Um, he doesn't really do anything. And then you just pick up this key here. I believe you need it to open this wall here. And the one you're interested in, you can try them all I think, but the second one on the left and then bring it back here. So, I mean, you maybe could fight him normally, but you might need to do stuff like uh, aggro him, then wait for his buffs to expire, because I think he casts like mag uh, protection from magical weapons there, which can't really do anything about that to begin with. So, if you want to try and fight him straight up, uh, you can go ahead, but I'm just going to take the item and use it, because it's much easier. And you get a cool, I think, 22,000 experience for just killing him permanently, which is nice. And that's pretty much it for this chapter. Um, there's one other story progression thing we need to do, which is to go to the bridge up in the northeast of the first area. But all you need to do there is basically just run around and hide for a bit and then there's a cutscene and then you pretty much move on to chapter 9 after that. One thing you get is the dwarves will actually help you later on if you do the side quest here. I, hope this I need a swig of some strong dwarven ale. So we need to go up to this bridge here, um, an encounter will happen automatically and all you really need to do is just wait a few seconds, um, you don't even really need to fight the enemies here, so I just summon and then go stand in this corner for a bit. I think I do get found out, so I need to run about for a bit, but after that cutscene happens then we pretty much head back to the start, start area and then we move on to the next chapter. And that's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys next time on the next episode. Would you help but it does not you have I regret your you and I will meet again. Of this I am sure. We do not need to meet as enemies. Reconsider your course, I beg you. You all right? Damn. Agreed. Spread the word, Duncan. Mark the new route on everyone's maps. We move out as soon as our friend is ready. The Coastway Crossing dis- I am sorry for your loss.